All right, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petri here. Let's see, we're gonna shift gears today. We're gonna actually work with some templates. I have numerous templates here in the studio. Um, over the years, I've used them uh, here and there. Uh, I like to use them for practice, actually. They really work out good. Um, sometimes I'll work with large rectangles. This is a um, Fiskars rectangle um, template. So it's all rectangles, and I can just take large sheets of paper and use this larger um, template trace it out with a pencil and then I can fill that in with some different colors. We're going to do some templates, some swatches, colors, and um, you can change up the sizes. If you have a large sheet of paper, you can use this. If you're working on a smaller sheet of paper, you can use the smaller. These are great to have. They just make uh, like practicing a lot more fun and interesting and quicker. So some of you might like to draw a uh, freehand or contour draw your squares. That's fine too. Or your rectangles or any kind of shapes you like to draw um, to work on brushwork and um, color mixing and uh, other uh, brush techniques. You can also do circles. Practicing uh, circles is always fun. Um, drawing in a circle maybe a series of five or six or so circles um, with pencil and then painting in your favorite colors, your favorite color combinations. Uh, this is good practice with uh, brushwork. So therefore, if you're working on a pr painting and you ha are working with some circles on your painting, you'll have practiced them ahead of time and then your brushwork will go a lot quicker and you'll be able to just sort of uh, work through the um, shapes that you're painting and you're painting a lot quicker, more effectively, and it won't be more of a struggle. And as we know, watercolor is a fast medium. Things are always drying on us, right? We're Does that make sense? We're always painting and the, the watercolor washes are drying. We need to kind of move pretty quickly through our paintings to uh, keep things going all the time. So working, uh, or being um, efficient with our brush strokes and putting on our washes is really important. So that, that's why I always uh, practice uh, up on my, my brush work. And sometimes if I'm just don't really want to work on a painting, I'll just draw out some rectangles and try out some new colors and things like that. So it's always a good time to uh, um, <clears throat> shift gears and do a little practicing in the studio for fun. Uh, you can do these in sketchbooks. So we could take a sketchbook and and then put our um, we can do some any type of shapes here circle square so you can just have a little sketchbook maybe for fun if you feel like you want to do something in a sketchbook a little more um, like a um, something you can you can save and look back to or if you're using specific colors you can work in a sketchbook save them label them what colors were used when you're painting them and then you can go back and say oh i really enjoyed those colors i used on these swatches in my sketchbook and you have a, a permanent record of it and then you can go back and say yeah those are the colors i really like to use so i'll use that in this new painting i'm creating so you can kind of have a little diary of things you've done in your watercolor uh, practice time and then uh, that's always a fun thing. I have numerous sketchbooks, stacks of them. They also make these. These are really interesting. These are for curves. So we can make curved lines. So you can move it around and get some interesting uh, different shapes and things. And you can really create any any type of uh, designs, curves, just some offbeat type of shapes with curves. These are fun to use.
these you can you can get these on Amazon. The um, templates. This one is a. Um, this one is see-through. The uh, green ones are Statler. So these are made by Statler, I believe. Rapid Design makes this, I believe. Fiskars makes the orange. And then the other square and circles are Statlers, I believe. Statler is the squares. Like that. And we'll get started here. We'll do a couple let's paint. Let's get some paint washes going. And I'll just use a number five um, Kolinsky Sable travel brush by uh, Da Vinci. And we'll just start off, maybe we'll... This is always fun to just practice our brushwork here. So I'm going with straight paint. And there was a little water in my brush from uh, going to the water bucket. So I had a little tiny bit of water on the brush. And then I'm just going into straight paint. So we have some blue, French ultramarine blue. And then we can um, go with some raw umber. And then mix and match a little bit there. And that's a really cool effect of mixing those together. Maybe a little more of the French ultramarine blue here. Then we can rinse off the brush and then with a damp brush sort of mix this out. So that we have some dark tonal values over here. Some rich pure pigment. Just enough water to move it around a little. And then as we go over to the right we just practice some thinning out the wash using what's there, just damp brush and damp brushing that out. And just moving moving the brush around carefully to get those outer outer points of the uh, square. And we have a fun time of mixing some colors, seeing what we like with colors, and then as well practicing our um, our washes and our, our control of our paint and our water. This could be some light coming from this side of the object and the lights here and it as it darkens you get into the darker tonal values over here on the left. And then up here let's go with some sap green. So I just go straight sap green And I'm just carefully working my brush. And let's maybe use some yellow ochre. Sap green, yellow ochre. And then maybe we'll go with some viridian green. And then maybe we'll make an interesting cadmium red over here. So we'll kind of make it an interesting, uh, some green and gold, and then some uh, cadmium red. Cadmium red tends to really, it, um, it mixes really fast. So if you put it onto a wash with another color, it usually will really, um, blend quickly and move uh, move into the, the other washes next to it very fast. And then we can some yellow ochre battle back. 
with some yellow ochre if you want. If that if there's too much uh, cadmium red there, then we can maybe go with some alizarin crimson. So here we're mixing alizarin crimson into that wash a little bit too. And a couple splashes. Add a little bit of water in. So these are just some fun shapes we can keep working and maybe we'll maybe we'll do a circle here. And we can always uh, upsize our brush a little bit. So here this is a number eight, or a number six, uh, Da Vinci Maestro brush, Kalinsky Sable. So a, a little larger brush. Let's try a little larger size brush. That's always fun too, is trying to uh, use different size brushes that you have when you're working with these um, swatches and these different um, practice uh, compositions here. And what it does is it kind of gives you a feel of how to work your brush within the area that you're uh, painting. So a smaller brush would be a little easier, maybe, to um, work in this kind of these um, size uh, swatches. Working with a larger brush might might be a little more challenging. So here we might try to So I just I hold the brush down and keep the brush down on the paper at all times here. Try not to lift up whatsoever. And see if see if we can get that in maybe like that. That's pretty good. Then we can uh, just soften out this. That works good. That's um, that's basically you know the technique of just trying to uh, set the brush down and hold it in place, and then just move it around very carefully and slowly, and slowly move the water and paint around within the area that you're working. Um, that really helps a lot because that's really you can really keep a nice looking wash once you have your brush down and you hold it there and keep it on the paper. Uh, sometimes I notice when I've painted, when I first started painting, I think I, I did more like brush stroke lift, brush stroke lift up, brush stroke lift up, and that tends to, let's see what that does, and then we can kind of, I can explain it a little more. We can draw freehand too. So if you're, if you're not too, you know, if you don't think those templates are something you like, you can always just create your own. You can create your own uh, swatches. So when I first started, I think I did... We'll use maybe uh, raw umber and some sap green. I used to paint more like this, and you can kind of see what that does. It makes it kind of blotchy looking, so it is good to try to um, maybe practice on keeping the brush uh, right on the paper, and then on this we could do like um, just moving the brush back and forth. And then we can go in, rinse the brush, and uh, 
dry off the brush a little bit on a sponge or, or some paper, uh, paper towels or tissue, ap apron, and then we So that's uh, less blotchy than kind of dabbing at the paint. I think a lot of artists do that. A lot of artists tend to paint like sort of in a, like painting a, uh, like painting a wall, like in a house, like paint, doing house painting. Kind of that like just painting up and down strokes. So it's good to, I think it's good. If Does that make sense? It, is it, it might be better sometimes to learn those where we can, the strokes where we can set the brush down and just do the keeping the brush down at all times and that tends to have a better finish to it the other looks a little more blotchy sometimes you, you might like blo a blotchy look too that sometimes does look good if we're painting something that might you want to have more variety to it but just some things to practice I, I'm thinking and uh, we can do another swatch here. Let's. Here we can actually have fun. We can. Practice us. Uh, we can practice smoothing out a nice wash. Let's go with some. Uh, let's go with maybe some cobalt blue. French ultramarine blue, straight tube paint. Cerulean blue. So I'm just putting in lots of paint there, straight paint, a little bit of burnt umber maybe. Kind of mix that in. And then what we can do is we can practice mixing this this way here. That. So if we can practice, that is a really good thing to practice, thinning out that wash. If you like it darker here, we still have some time to work. We can add, add some more French ultramarine blue, some more burnt umber. Maybe some yellow oak or two. We still have time to work. Paper is still damp. And we can do that same thing. And that turns out to be a little darker since we use lots of dark paint. So that's fine. And then if we like, we can dampen our brush and lift up some paint. Rinse the brush out. We uh, dry it off a little. We can lift up some paint, rinse off the brush, dry off the water on a sponge or a paper towel, and then you can lift up some paint. That's always a fun thing to practice. And then if we lift up some of that paint, we, we see that we're fine. We have lots of time. And then we could thin this out even more this way. And there we have more of an even uh, wash of going dark to light. And we can practice the other way too, going back this way. So we could take our rectangle like that and we can practice going dark to light from right to left. We'll change up our colors here. Um, let's go with some purple, ultramarine. 
straight tube paint. And I'm just going to try to get down that first bit of paint. And maybe some orange. Some cerulean blue. And I'm mixing on the paper. Yellow ochre, cadmium orange. And then here I try to do the same thing. Then I rinse the brush, dry off the brush, and then just a damp brush for that last uh, bit of the uh, swatch. So that's pretty good. That's uh, three different styles of um, swatches, left to right, right to left, using darker tones, tonal values, and darker colors, darker pigment, and then going from right to left, and then here, the darker pigments, and then going here and thinning down that wash and making that thinner look. That's always good when we're capturing light effects in paintings. Being able to go from dark to light pretty efficiently, pretty quickly. And uh, let's, let's do some more swatches. We'll take a break. I always mention, um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're going to always do these small, um, just, you know, qu quick um, videos on technique and things. Uh, it helps as a watercolor artist if you can practice on your techniques occasionally. So if you get bored with just painting paintings, and I sometimes I get bored where I'm painting a lot of paintings and I just want to take a break for a while and just maybe do some swatches like this, maybe play around with different colors, maybe see if I like some new colors I want to work with or whatever. So I still always do these, not maybe as much as I did when I first started painting, but I definitely still do these. I think they're great to do. I hope you'll practice these and try these. And again, I'm hoping you're subscribing and hitting that notification bell. This way you'll always see our new videos coming out every week as we, we, we work. And uh, we'll take a quick break now and we'll come right back. We'll do some more swatches. Maybe we'll do some more uh, round circular swatches. Those are fun to do. We'll mix the colors a little bit. And maybe we'll also try some other brushwork, some interesting brushwork with um, uh, getting different uh, types of marks on your paper. So when you're working on your paper, we'll come right back. We'll talk about that next and uh, we'll see you in just a second. All right, we are back. We're going to do some more painting, some more technique work. This is uh, Fabriano paper I'm using. I trimmed down the uh, pages off of a larger sheet. I think I bought um, some larger sheets at the uh, local art store, and then I just trim them down to like a seven by 10 or so, maybe a six by eight size. I just divide the sheets down uh, by, you know, just dividing them up, folding them in half, and then making them into smaller sections. So, let's start out here. I'll go with a little bit of a larger brush now. This is a uh, number 10 Da Vinci Maestro. Watercolor brush, Kalinsky Sable Hairs. And this, this exercise is really fun. This is going uh, to be getting uh, thin to thick lines with our watercolor brush. Um, so let's uh, go in. We'll Maybe we'll take some cobalt blue, some ultramarine violet. Now here we'd 
what what I what I'd like to do here is get, I'm just thinking out loud here. I want to get a thin line, very very fine pointy line. So and I want to go across the page this way. So I rest my hand on the paper. I put the um, very very point of the brush on the paper. And then what I do is I kind of just slide my arm across slowly in my hand. So I'm just sliding my hand very gently on the paper as if I'm brushing something off the paper. So I'm just kind of doing that type of a thing. And I'm just trying to keep the brush tip only, the very, very points of the hairs of the brush on the paper. And that gives me a nice thin line. This could be for some horizon line work. If you're making some distant ocean, we'll get some green. Maybe we'll use some sap green mixed in with that uh, blue and purple. So this could be, then I get a little thicker line. So now I just do the same thing. The, the motion is basically sliding across the paper with your hand resting on the paper as if you're sweeping off some uh, crumbs from the eraser. But you just want, we want to keep that just keep it a slow movement across like so. And then we press down a little more to get a wider um, brush stroke here, like that. Um, then we can go and get some Viridian Green. Maybe a little touch more water. This was straight paint to the right here. That's basically straight paint with just enough water to kind of get it onto the paper. Now we'll work with some uh, Viridian Green, a little more uh, water, but not a lot of water, you can kind of see. And then the same thing, let's work with the brush. Let's do some thin lines like this, sliding our hand and then maybe touch down and do a little, leave some white paper in there, like that. And there we have it, we have some waves now. So this could be ocean water. This could be the ocean near the shore. You have your darker uh, ocean colors out here in the distance. And then here we're coming in closer and you have more of the choppy waves. We're using some of that Viridian Green. And we could do the same thing, maybe a little bit of Cerulean Blue and some Viridian Green. Maybe even some uh, Olive Green. Like that. Now maybe we'll go with a little bit of a thicker line. Let's press a little bit more down and leave some more of the brush on the paper. Then we lift up. Push down, lift up. Like that. Then we come back across, just barely touching the paper, sliding the hand on, the, on your work uh, area. So if you have a large... It's better to work on a large... Uh, I have... Um, a large foam board I work on. So anytime I'm working on a watercolor, I, I always have lots of extra um, uh, foam board underneath my working area so that my hand can always slide and move around on my uh, painting. And there you can see we had a little bit of fun doing some of the um, more of the greener colors. We can splash, add some splashes to that, makes it feel like the ocean. Just some splashes with paint. Then maybe we can use a little bit of raw sienna. Raw sienna for the, um, some of the sand color here. Now here I'm taking my brush and I'm going the opposite way instead of going this way. Maybe I'll take the brush and just turn it this way and sort of scrub across a little bit like that. And just have some fun getting some of that sand color there. Looks beautiful, right? You can do this. This is really just... We started out with that fine line up top with the blue, the dark blue, French ultramarine blue, and um, a little bit of the um, ultramarine violet for the purplish blue, and then we added some sap green, and then we just, 
and you can also add a little bit of um, variation to some of the crashing waves in the distance there. Some choppy waves coming in. So that's always a fun exercise to work on. And if you work on this every once in a while, take a break from doing paintings and just work on a little focused swatch like this. Um, then in, in a, maybe a short time you might be doing a, a really nice seascape painting or a beach scene or something of that effect. And you'll if you've practiced this maybe five or six times, you'll be surprised that when you're working on your finished painting, you'll just automatically start putting in your what you naturally have practiced. So whatever you practice, that becomes your, your finished work actually, because you'll just revert back to it. Your mind will just think, when did I do this before? Oh, right, I was practicing that just uh, six months ago or three months ago. And when you're doing your painting, you'll just start uh, putting in your um, ocean, let's say, and your waves and your beach area, just like you did in your practice uh, time. So that's why I always say, hey, it's great to do these practice swatches. I, I do them often. And uh, we could do some sky even too here. We could add some sky wash. Let's do some cerulean blue. And just maybe some cloud shapes. You can tape this off too if you want. You can, you know, tape out a rectangle. Or once you start, you can uh, take a pencil and just pencil in a, a border if you want. So you can pencil in a border like that if you like while you're working. Maybe when you start you can do that or if you can start you can do that at a later time like we just did now or you can tape it even with some tape. But these are practice swatches so you don't have to get too fancy. And a little bit of blue sky wash and you leave the white paper for the clouds. And then maybe here in the distance, we sort of make the cloud shapes maybe a little more smaller. Clouds get smaller as they go into the distance. The happy clouds are there. They're darker up here usually, the clouds, more blue sky. And a little darker over here. And this is kind of, you know, a little bit abstract. It's not really, I'm not getting every perfect detail in here. And you can work out to your pencil lines if you add pencil lines in a little bit later like this. You can do that too. And this again would just be practicing your brush control working with the um, the lines and the splashing here. All right, so that's a little fun exercise when you want to work on some sky wash, some ocean uh, washes, doing the uh, waves, some of the sand. A lot of fun. This is really fun to do. And it's, you know, fun and free. You don't have to worry. It's not a painting or a finished painting. Just a small composition to work on. Again, the more we can work on these, then when we go in to do a painting, a finished painting, it's a lot more easy. We're not, we're not stressing too much. We kind of have practiced uh, the sky wash like this with some clouds a few times. We've practiced the waves crashing into the shore and the distant uh, ocean. So this is fun. All right, so again, uh, 
this is uh, something we'll, we'll uh, take a quick break here and we'll come right back and we'll do a little more brush work. Maybe we'll do some, uh, maybe we'll do some um, more vertical washes where we're going to, here we're doing more horizontal washes. We're doing the ocean. Let, we'll, the next we'll do some horizontal type washes where we're working from the top and maybe working down or working upwards just to get a feel for that. Okay, so we'll be right back. Just going to take a quick break. All right, and we're back again. We're continuing to work on some swatches, some brushwork. Uh, even within our fun time of doing some brush and uh, swatch work, we can create some fun compositions just like this here, using some real simple color color um, compositions with uh, just a couple. We just use really blue, green, purple, and then some uh, raw sienna for the beach uh, sand here, and you have a beautiful small composition. And at the same time, we practice our techniques of uh, having that brush on the paper at all times, getting our um, our parallel lines for our ocean in, controlling our controlling the point of our brush on the paper so that the brush stays on the paper with just the point touching to give us those fine lines of the ocean and the crashing waves coming in, and then uh, some wider brush strokes here where we press down on the brush and widen it out a little bit and we get a little larger brush strokes and that feel of the um, ocean here closer to us and and then filling in the sand which is maybe some um, more uh, just freer type brush strokes not really worrying so much about uh, being really accurate with our washes here when you're doing a wash, a large wash like this, again, we can just, you know, have fun and get the wash on there and some splashes. So let's uh, get started again, and we'll lift this up here. We'll put another, uh, again, a, some, I have some more Fabriano paper. This one is, um, this is bright white, and the one with the ocean here, this was, I think, the... Uh, um, might be like the uh, classic white. So it's got that little bit of a cr uh, creamy, like beige kind of look to it. And this is the Fabriano um, Extra White. And I'll just tape down the four corners here of the paper. And I use some good uh, painter's tape. We'll just tape up down our paper so that it stays secure as we paint. And then we'll take our pencil and we're going to do some more vertical uh, brush strokes here. So let's go with a And here I'm going to use the, the larger brush. This was the number 10. So this is a number 10 brush. And uh, let's use some reds here. Red paint isn't as popular as like the blues and the greens. Uh, blue and green tend to be more of the favorite colors of most people. Um, but reds are exciting too flowers and all kinds of interesting things. So we'll do some red up here. Maybe we're painting some flowers. So here you can see I'm keeping, this is pretty much straight paint, so there's not much water there in there. You can kind of see that. Cadmium red, uh, that's rose matter and alizarin crimson. A nice mix of reds. Straight paint, which is a little bit of damp uh, water in the brush. And we just keep the brush on the paper at all times. Don't we don't want to lift at all? Swirl around the brush. 
And there we have it. Now, as we get a little bit lower, let's lift up, rinse the brush. Um, we, we can dry it off on a sponge just to get some of the water off, but we want to leave it damp. And then we just want to continue back in, and we want to work this wash down to make it a little lighter, like that. Keeping the brush, again, on the paper at all times, swirl it around, but don't lift up at all. Keep it on the brush. So this takes time. you, you got to practice at this to keep your brush on the paper because the, the tendency is to want to lift up like that. But if you just keep, and then... And that looks pretty good. Pretty smooth. Pre looks good. Good paper too. Uh, sometimes the uh, like pr I I use practice paper too. I have like uh, student grade paper I use when I'm doing things like swatches like this and things or practicing some color ideas. Um, but when you use Fabriano for finished paintings, uh, this is the kind of effect you'll get. It'll be much more. You know, it it really is a such a quality that. Your washes come out so much more smooth, and um, they don't cause they don't make a lot of like blotches and cauliflowers and blossoms and those funny looking marks that you might get with maybe a student grade paper. So, I always suggest um, on unfinished paintings. Does this make sense? Unfinished paintings that you're going to do, you might want to have the fancy paper, the good stuff, and then for practice, you don't have to use really good paper like Fabriano or Arches. You know. I use sometimes uh, regular printer paper. I buy a whole big, uh, uh, large uh, stack of uh, printer paper, at the, a heavyweight printer paper at the local office store. And then sometimes when I'm practicing swatches and brush strokes and different things like that, I just use that. And it's just to practice the brush strokes and the feel for the brush. And I'm not really worried about what the uh, actual swatch looks like or what the paint looks like on the paper. I'm just trying to get down the, the feel of the brush strokes and different things like that. So I've used office paper a lot, too, to practice and less expensive paints as well, too. I sometimes will just use uh, the, um, sometimes I'll use, I think I have one right here. Like sometimes I'll use this type of, for practice just for practicing brushwork without worrying about anything else. I'll use this type of a paint to just practice. We'll do some of that too, maybe. Maybe in another video we'll go over just doing the real fun, fun uh, practice time washes and things with just some inexpensive paints like this and bigger brushes, maybe some larger mop brushes and things. And th that's always fun too. So let's continue on here. Let's uh, maybe do another swatch here. Let's do a let's do a real let's use one of our templates. Okay, I think we'll use this one here. There we go. That's a fast way to, you know, you could put like 20 of these, 20 of these on a large sheet of paper really fast. But it's always good to practice too, drawing the rectangles like this. And let's, uh, let's stick with our larger brush. Maybe let's do, um, let's do some greens here. Uh, Viridian, sap green, uh, olive green, Viridian green. Now let's try to do the side to side, keeping the brush down at all times and just go back and forth and don't worry about the edges. You're going to, we'll finish up those edges in a second. Okay, good. Rinse, I rinse off the brush, dry the brush off a little bit on some uh, my apron here and then let's continue get a little more wash on there that 
that looks good. Now we use the very point of the brush and just do a little touch up here and there. And if you go outside the lines, don't worry about it. That looks good too. A little splashing. All right, fine, that looks good. Maybe one more. Let's do... more of a thinner rectangle. And let's, maybe we'll do some blue. We did blue before, let's try. Um, let's see, let's do maybe orange and yellow. Cadmium orange, yellow ochre. All right, here we go. I'm focusing, trying to keep, keep my brush in this in the side inside of the rectangle. I rinse off the brush, dry it off a little bit, pick up a little more of that paint. Careful brush strokes to. And then a damp brush. A damp brush just to get the paint, the very lightest washes going here. Then I take the brush again, rinse off, totally dry the brush at this point. So I would use maybe a um, tissue there dry off all the water pretty much for the most most of it and then just and that's sort of using the uh, side to side parallel um, brush strokes going down getting from the darkest tonal value that you can get with an orange and yellow which is straight paint thinning out the paint as you go to the point where you're almost using just a little tiny bit of paint and you're just using a damp brush to get that light effect going toward the bottom here. So that's another fun exercise. And uh, we will probably, maybe we'll do just one more for fun. Let's do some circles. Um, those are fun. Those work more, those are more user friendly. <clears throat> uh, doing circle swatches when you're trying to uh, perfect the technique of keeping the brush down on the paper. So we'll try some circles in just a second or two. Um, I also wanted to mention, if you just uh, happen to um, come by my site for the first time, please subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, it's a great thing because then you'll just be notified each week of new videos that are coming out. So we're always doing new watercolor um, technique videos. We're constantly doing paintings. For the most part, we do finished paintings uh, each week, and then once in a while we'll do a little break and we'll do some techniques and things like that with uh, watercolor. So you can kind of um, just brush up on some skills if you need to. And uh, so that's always a fun thing uh, to do. And again, we do paintings for the most part each week, which would be, you know, landscapes, uh, seascapes, still life. We do figure work um, and... Uh, you know, a lot of good things like that. So it's a lot of fun. Come on by. Enjoy it. Um, if you don't see a video you like, you can always come back the next week. And uh, if you're subscribed and you have the subscribe button, a notification bell clicked on uh, here at this channel, you'll be notified uh, right away when the new video comes out. You can check it and see if you like to join along with us and uh, paint, draw and paint watercolor. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take another quick break and we'll come back and we'll do maybe just one more segment or two and that should be it. But if you practice these on a consistent basis, you'll definitely, your brushwork will get so much better. You have so much more fun painting because watercolor painting is a fast medium. I always say that if you're painting 
um, and your technique is not as solid as it could be, then you're going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage. So it's better to practice some of the simple things like this that will take your technique uh, to another level and you'll get stronger at your brushwork. Um, and that will equal better paintings because you're going to have more of a fun time painting um, versus uh, struggling sometimes in a painting when there's a difficult section in a watercolor painting. Sometimes if you're not really super secure with your techniques, with your brushwork, it can really affect the, the, over, you know, the overall painting, the look of the painting. So, so we're just trying to get you up to speed on doing some practice. You'll have fun with this. You can do this anytime. You can click on this video every, anytime you want and, and practice up along with me. Or you can just start your own little uh, practice session that you do to warm up before your paintings or anytime you want. All right, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We're starting up again. We're gonna practice our swatches. Let's. We just had some fun doing these rectangles here and try some different colors. And you can mix your colors too. We did some just straight colors here. You know, for the most part, we did mix our greens a little bit. Um, orange and, and red. We kind of just kept with. I think we did mix our reds here. We did all three reds mixed together. And then we just used orange and yellow ochre there. And then for our greens, we use sap green, olive green, and some viridian green. Gives us just a little more of a variation to the colors versus just going with one color. You can practice with just one color too. Again, these are just fun exercises to practice. Our brush strokes and practice drawing squares. If you're, uh, you can use uh, those templates or uh, stencils to uh, draw in some quick uh, rectangles, or if you want to draw them in by hand, that's always good too, to practice uh, drawing things by hand and uh, freehand. And then we'll put another Fabriano paper here. Let's get some tape. So I just use some good artist tape here. We'll just tape these down a little bit. start painting again. Let's get our stencils. And we'll do a couple circles here. I'll draw some, or I'll use my uh, template here. Maybe we'll do some smaller And I'm just randomly anywhere is fine. I'm just doing some random interesting circles here and there. There we go. And then for the larger ones, we'll use, um, I think this is a number six. Number six, Da Vinci will use Maestro, Da Vinci Maestro, Kalinsky Sable, round brush. Uh, let's go with uh, cerulean blue. So now we're just going to go and just have a fun time. Hold the brush down at all times. Do not lift. See if you can spin that around like that. And then I rinse off the brush. And then with a damp brush, just keep the brush on the paper. Do not lift up it at all. If possible, try, try, try to do it. Oh, it's getting, here, there we go. All right, good. That can be difficult. It's always difficult to try to keep the brush on the paper. And uh, we did it though. And there's maybe a couple spots that look a little bit, but that doesn't look too bad. That's a pretty good effect. Let's try another one. Let's do, um, let's do another blue. So we'll use some French ultramarine blue and we'll try to keep the brush on the paper the whole time. Then 
Let's do some purple. Straight back right into the purple. And then we just use a damp brush and maybe try to go around that outer area there just to get a little bit of paint right up close to the uh, pencil line there if we can. If this is uh, this is doing really fine, you know, if you really want to practice that fine tuning, if you just want to go with more of a freer look and you're not so concerned about uh, maybe we'll use some cadmium lemon and green. Maybe we just want to go in there and practice keeping an eye on the brush hairs like that good and then just a quick like that no big deal then we'll switch to a smaller brush well for the smaller circles here and let's do some let's do some cadmium red I'm keeping the brush at straight paint, straight cadmium red paint, and I'm not going to lift up my brush. Good. Let's maybe try some cadmium lemon yellow. Oh, this is cadmium yellow. Straight paint, no water really, just I rinsed off my brush and it was a damp brush, straight paint. Let's do um, some burnt sienna, we haven't used that. Okay, burnt sienna. And uh, let's do cobalt blue. Cobalt blue over here. Straight paint. Okay, then we just a couple splashes. Different color splashes, orange, blue, green. This would be our practicing time for practicing splashes. So we would have some red too. Some purple maybe. So we just do mix a couple different colors, different color splashes. That's all. You can practice some and you could you can do the um, splashes and spattering on a different page. You can, I often do that. I'll try a different sheet of paper, but we're just going to leave these as they are. And uh, and then if you need more splashy looking splashes, that's usually when we use a little more water. So we use some blue and green lots of water and then you can get some really good size splashes like that I'm just having some fun practicing Let's take what let's do one more I'm just gonna go around and put a border around this for fun just to practice some brush strokes like that okay now let's try one more
and I'll tape this down again. So my paper doesn't move around. And we'll use our larger brush, number 10. And what I'll do is burn umber, French ultramarine blue, burn sienna. Start at the top. Let's try to keep, let's try to make our, let's paint in some lines and try to make them larger as we go. So we have one there. Let's go a little bit wider. Now we press down a little more, use a little more of the brush, and we try to keep that line a little wider, like that. So I'm just pressing down and sliding my hand real slowly across and widening out the brushes, the brush here. Then I will Now we'll go a little wider yet. And we're going to go wider yet. We're going to try to use the full range of the brush hairs as we can. So now this is going to be a little wider. Yep, more wide. There we go. And let's Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna. I'll use a little more water here. I'll need more water to uh, make that widest. Uh, brush stroke, so now let's see. There we go. So now we've had we have all the brush strokes from thinnest thin to widest wide. As we're painting this, we can always add in some color. Cadmium red. Yellow. So we can add in some colors, but usually that, once we go in a second time like we're doing now, you only have a little bit of time to work with that and, and blend in some color. Usually it's hard to blend in some color. But you can blend in colors up here. And some all right so that's some fun practice with the brush here trying to control the uh, width of your lines your brush strokes that really is helpful this way if you're in a pain and you want to cover a lot of ground fast you're comfortable with pushing your brush all the way down to the ferrule of the brush and really getting a nice wide line and you might want to cover a large section of painting quick especially if you're painting outdoors in the summertime when watercolor dries super quick in the in the summertime when you're painting outdoors especially indoors with air conditioning not so much a problem but if you ever encounter painting outdoors um, you'll you'll always know that it, watercolor dries so fast on the paper that you really have to work quickly and you have to be able to if you're going to cover a larger sheet of paper you're going to be working with larger brushes and have to be able to really put lots of paint <clears throat> lots of watercolor washes down quickly uh, okay i hope this is fun i hope you guys will just practice this as much as you can you'll have fun with it you'll create your own designs your own ways of practicing as well too this is just a beginning point for 
um, practicing watercolor brush techniques and uh, watercolor washes and so forth. But I hope you had a fun time. Again, please uh, hit the like button if you like this video. And uh, again, if you want to subscribe, please uh, do. We have um, plenty of videos all the time coming out on this channel, all watercolor, and uh, we have a fun time. So come back and have some more fun next week, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.